Recently my brother saw a video that was tying together the recent Yu-Gi-Oh movie and Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds. When he asked me to explain what NOD was, I found myself giving him a 20 minute lecture on the lore of 5Ds and its connection to the rest of the series. So I decided to make my own video about Yu-Gi-Oh lore. Originally I was going to do the entire show including all of the spin-offs, but after finishing writing the script for just Duel Monsters, I decided I didn't want an 8 hour video. Plus I'm yet to watch of Reigns and Sevens, so I figured it would be best to do them one at a time. So here it is, the entirety of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters lore. Just so you know, I'm running this purely off the anime series and not the manga at all, which is fairly different but just as good. And I'm not including the Pyramid of Light, Bonds Beyond Time and Dark Side of Dimensions movies because they don't fit in very normally with the rest of the series and are more self-focused. Before we get started, if you like this video, the best way to let me know is by subscribing and liking the video. It helps me out so much with growing my channel. Thanks a lot. 10,000 years ago, there was the most advanced society in the world, called Atlantis. One day, these green rocks called the Orichalcos began raining from the sky. These massively skyrocketed the technology in Atlantis, but began corrupting the people of Atlantis. The king of the Atlantean darts was so confused by all the chaos going on that he sought out the advice of the Orichalcos, which told him about this beast beneath the earth called the Great Leviathan, and then gave him magical powers and the ability to command and summon Orichalcos soldiers. After learning of Darts' plan to resurrect the Great Leviathan, his daughter Chris and his father Einhart seek out assistance from a world of monsters, including three legendary soldiers, that later Darts turns into dragons. There is a massive battle, and there is no winner. The monsters all return to their own world, the legendary dragons are frozen and sealed away, the Great Leviathan is thwarted, and Atlantis sinks below the sea. Darts, now immortal, wanders the world, only being able to slowly gather souls for the Orichalcos. 5,000 years ago, the pharaoh of Egypt kills a village of thieves called Kul Elna and performs a dark ritual to create the Millennium Items, with Bakura being the only surviving member of the village. The curse left by the dead villagers gives Bakura the power of the beast Deerbound. The seven items that the pharaoh creates in this dark ritual are known as the seven Millennium Items and they're used to protect Egypt. They also give Egyptians the power to summon monsters through stone tablets. Later, the son of the pharaoh, Atem, is made the pharaoh, and he faces off with the bandit Bakura. During this fight, Atem summons the Egyptian gods to help fight with him. Later, one of his servants is slain by Bakura, but becomes the dark magician in the process. Bakura then takes the Millennium Ring and seals both a section of his own soul and a section of the Dark Lord Zork's soul within the ring, fusing them together. Later, one of Atem's priests, known as Seto, has rescued a girl named Kasara with an incredibly powerful dragon monster that she can utilize, called the Blue Eyes White Dragon. She's later tortured by the Pharaoh's guards to try and utilize her dragon, but Priest Seto saves her. Later, she saves his life in an attack that was meant to kill him, and she dies instead. Seto then takes the power of the Blue Eyes White Dragon for himself. At some point in the middle of this, Darts has arrived in Egypt and discovered that Atem has a really powerful soul, and starts planning to capture him, but is unable to capture the pharaoh since he seals himself away later. After gathering the Millennium Items, Bakura summons Zork, but is defeated as Atem performs a ritual to fuse the three Egyptian gods together and seal away Zork, using his own name, Atem, as the key to release and seal away Zork. Atem then has the Millennium Items taken away, giving the rod and the necklace to the Tomb Keeper's family, and the rest to Shadir's predecessors, and then he steals his spirit within the Millennium Puzzle. After Atem seals himself away, Seto becomes the new pharaoh and hides all of the information that lists Atem's name so that nobody can re-release Sork. Cutting forward to almost modern day, a name named Pegasus loses his lover, Cecilia, to an unknown illness. In his grief, he begins to search the world for a way to revive the dead, eventually arriving in Egypt and meeting Shadi, a ghost who guards the Millennium Items. After meeting them, Shadi entrusts Pegasus with a Millennium Eye, replacing one of his eyes with it. Pegasus can briefly see the ghost of his former lover, and attempts to find more ways to unlock this magic to truly bring her back to life. Pegasus learns of the ancient Egyptian Shadow Games, and the stone tablets that were used to summon monsters, and creates a card game using these monsters, allowing a person of great magical power to utilize the monsters properly within these cards. Once his card game becomes a worldwide sensation, 
he travels to Egypt again to try and find the tablets of the Egyptian gods to create their cards as well. Everyone involved in the production of these god cards, except for Pegasus, mysteriously dies. And when Pegasus tries to finish the production on his own, he receives a vision from Shadi, warning him of the power that he is unleashing. Pegasus then gives the Egyptian god cards to one of the tomb keepers to bury away in the Pharaoh's tomb. At a Duel Monsters World tournament, he embarrasses a contender named Bandit Keith by using his Millennium Eye to read his mind and then give a list of instructions of how to beat Bandit Keith to a small child, ruining Keith's career. During this time, Darts begins to gather his own forces, creating his three swordsmen. He crashes down a tidal wave on a cruise ship, leaving only a single survivor, Raphael. Raphael treasures his Duel Monsters cards as family. During his several years alone on this island, he hears the voice of Darts and he sees the visions of Atlantis up until he's rescued. He is then recruited by Darts and given the card Guardian Dreadscythe. Alistair lives in a war-torn country, with a war that's been funded by Kyber Corp. His younger brother is killed in an explosion, and Alistair oversees Gozaburo Kyber being paid by the military, which is actually Darts in disguise. Darts later recruits Alistair and stokes his hate for the Kyber family. Valen was an orphan who was being looked after by a nun. A gang buys the church and tries to kick her out. That night, Dart sets the church on fire, but believing it was the gang that bought it, Valen beats up the gang and is sent to a jail that's owned by Darts. All of the inmates are given a copy of the Seal of Orichalcos, and after Valen captures the soul of all the other inmates, he is recruited by Darts. Two orphans named Seto and Mokuba have been awaiting to be adopted. Seto is a child prodigy and a genius at strategy and incredibly intelligent. When Gozaburo Kaiba, a chess master and the CEO of Kaiba Corp, a company that sells war machines and weapons, visits the orphanage, Seto challenges him to a chess game with the terms of Gozaburo adopting him and his brother if he loses. After Seto wins the game, he and Mokuba are adopted. However, before Seto and Mokuba were actually brought to live with Gozaburo, Gozaburo's biological son, Noah, is hit and almost killed in a car accident. Originally, Gozaburo planned to use Seto to challenge Noah and be his rival, but instead, Gozaburo begins to raise him as an actual son since Noah is no longer with him. Gozaburo is able to preserve Noah's mind within a virtual world and begins to slowly expand this virtual world for Noah to live in. After several years, Gozaburo realizes that Noah's emotional growth has been stunted by being trapped within his virtual world, and Noah's behavior seems to be borderline psychotic such as suggesting that nearly all of human life could be easily obliterated in less than a month. Gozaburo abandons his actual son in the virtual world to put all of his focus into his adopted children. Later, Gozaburo gives Seto stocks in Kyber Corpse and asks him to make a hundred times that value back and return it to him within a year. Seto easily completes the task and begins to hatch a plan to take over Kyber Corp. Seto teams up with the Big Five, who are the board members of Kyber Corp, in order to buy 51% of the company to take it from Gozaburo. Seto tricks Gozaburo into letting them have close to all of the stocks before springing their trap, where he convinces his brother to give him the last 2% of stocks he needs to own the company. Gozaburo, in anguish, commits suicide. However, not before copying his mind into the virtual world, planning to take over Seto's body later. Seto Kaiba turns the company into one that creates devices for games, including hologram projectors for Duel Monsters, and he becomes a Duel Monsters World Champion and gets three of the four copies of the Blue Eyes White Dragon cards. When Kyber Corp seals a deal with Industrial Illusions to produce holographic duel arenas, another company, Schroeder Corp, has been planning to make a similar offer to them. Seto Kyber caused Siegfried von Schroeder to miss out with his deal with Pegasus. Because of Kyber Corp's timing, Siegfried resents Kyber. The Tomb Keeper family finds a baby abandoned near their home, that they adopt and name Odeon. Odeon grows up with the Tomb Keeper's child, Ishizu, hoping that he will soon be able to be the next to take over the Tomb Keeper family. However, they then have a son named Marek. Marek does not wish to become a Tomb Keeper, however his father refuses to let Odeon take his place. After years of abuse and forcibly being tattooed with the Tomb Keeper's tattoo, a second personality spawns from Marek, a much more evil and violent personality, known as Yami Marek. It briefly emerges to murder his father with a Millennium Rod. When Marek reawakens, he finds his father dead and Shadi standing before him, making him believe that Shadi murdered his father. Marek later fled his family, taking two of the Egyptian god cards and the Millennium Broad, starting the Rare Hunters Order, who try to take rare Duel Monsters cards from Duelists and are searching for the final Egyptian god card, Obelisk the Tormentor. Solomon Murder, an archaeologist, was exploring the Valley of the Kings in the hopes of finding the Tomb of a Pharaoh. 
After losing the rest of his party, Solomon manages to locate the Millennium Puzzle, which is in all of its pieces and not together. He brings this puzzle home, but can never solve it. Later, after the creation of Dual Monsters, he goes on an expedition with another archaeologist named Arthur Hawkins to try and prove his theory that Dual Monsters was based on an ancient Egyptian competition. They were caved in and trapped in a small room, and when they ran out of water, they held a game of Dual Monsters to determine who gets the last of the water. Solomon decides to surrender when he realises about a win to try and save Professor Hawkins' life. After they're both rescued, to show his gratitude, Professor Hawkins gives Solomon his Blue Eyes White Dragon card, one of the only four copies of the card in the world. Solomon later opens a game shop and gives the Millennium Puzzle to his grandson, Yugi Moto. Around this time, a man on a visit to Egypt purchases the Millennium Ring from a man who stole it from its resting place and gives it to his son, Bakura. Yugi Moto ends up solving the Millennium Puzzle, but not before becoming friends with Joey Wheeler, Tristan Taylor and Taya Gardner. Inside the puzzle, a Tem's soul awakens and begins to exist alongside Yugi's, but has lost all of its memories. Seto Kaiba, who happens to go to their same school, overhears them discussing Yugi's grandfather's rare card, and deducing that it must be the last copy of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, tries to take it from Solomon. When Solomon refuses to trade or sell it, Kaiba sends thugs to his shop and forces him into a duel with him, with the condition that if Kaiba wins, he gets the Blue Eyes White Dragon. After defeating Solomon, Kaiba tears up the 4th Blue Eyes card as he can't have a 4th copy of it in his deck and the card could only be used against him. Yugi takes his grandfather's deck and allows a temp to take over his body, defeating Kaiba in a duel, becoming the first duelist to ever summon Exodia the Forbidden One. A temp then uses a mind crush to destroy all the evil in Kaiba and give him a chance to start over. Kaiba's reputation is destroyed and the Big Five begin hatching a plan to overthrow him at Kaiba Corp. Maximilian Pegasus hears of Yugi's victory and uses magic to play a game of him from afar, demonstrating his powers and then steal Solomon's soul as an incentive for Yuki to chase him. Kaiba begins working on his dual disc system, which is designed to change the way that dual monsters is played. The Big Five then contact Pegasus and work with him to overthrow Kaiba Corp, kidnapping Mokuba and giving him to Pegasus, and attempting to do the same to Kaiba before he fakes his death. The Big Five leave Pegasus with the final condition that Yuki must be defeated in a duel in order for them to hand over the company to Pegasus. Pegasus begins his Duelist Kingdom tournament, bringing Duelists all around the world to his island for a card game tournament. Yugi and Joey join the tournament, Yugi wanted his grandfather's soul back, and Joey wants the prize money for his sister's operation. On the ship to Duel Monsters, Weevil Underwood, a regional champion of Duel Monsters, throws Yugi's Exodia cards into the ocean. Yugi arrives in the island and through channeling a Thames spirit, begins to win duels and move through the tournament. Joey also begins to win his own duels, including his first duel against a duelist named Mai Valentine, who they later become friends with. Eventually, Yugi runs into Mokuba Kaiba, who has escaped from Pegasus' prison and wants revenge against Yugi for defeating his brother. Atem, possessing Yugi, talks down Mokuba and they agree to stop Pegasus together, but then Mokuba gets re-kidnapped. Yugi then enduels an imposter Kaiba who Pegasus hired and gave Kaiba's stolen deck to. Joey wins the Red Eyes Black Dragon card from Rex Raptor, later becoming one of Joey's staple cards. Yugi and his group then run into Bakura, not to be confused with Thief King Bakura, who has the Millennium Ring, with Thief King Bakura's soul inside of it. Simple. When Thief King Bakura takes over Bakura, he traps the soul of Yugi and his friends within their favourite cards, but when he attempts to steal the Millennium Puzzle, the spirit of a Tem awakens and protects Yugi's body. After winning the duel against Thief King Bakura, Tem believes he has sealed him away safely. However, Thief King Bakura still exists within Bakura's Millennium Ring. Yugi then defeats a tournament eliminator named Panic, saving Mai Valentine from being eliminated from Duelist Kingdom, to which she promises to return the favour. Kaiba arrives in Duelist Kingdom, revealing that he's faked his death and has come to save Mokuba. After defeating Joey in a duel and showing off his new duel disc technology, he reclaims his deck and travels to Pegasus' castle. Joey then runs into the disgraced Bandit Keith and duels against one of his students. After Joey wins the duel, Bandit Keith and his goons seal them underground. When trying to escape these underground tunnels, Yugi and his friends run into Para and Docks, two eliminators, and after defeating them, have enough star chips to qualify for the finals and make their way to Pegasus' castle. Kaiba meets with Pegasus, who tells him that in order to duel him and take back Mokuba, he must first defeat Yugi in a duel, so Kaiba waits outside the castle to have his rematch of Yugi. In this rematch, Kaiba fuses all of his Blue Eyes White Dragon together to make a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, but Yugi manages to overcome it. When Kaiba realises that he's about to lose, he threatens to kill himself. 
A Tem is willing to go through with that risk and calls for his monster to attack, but at the last second Yugi calls off the attack and lets Kaiba win instead. Yugi is now aware of the spirit within the Millennium Puzzle. Yugi refuses to duel ever again, worried that a Tem may attempt to kill other duelists and vows not to duel. Mai tries to talk him out of it, and ends up dueling Teya. After watching them duel, Yugi regains his self-confidence and begins to communicate directly with a Tem for the first time. Inside the castle, Kaiba duels with Pegasus and loses. Pegasus revealing his special tune cards that only he has. Pegasus then seals away Kaiba's soul and continues on with his tournament. Bakura, Tristan and Teya attempt to figure out how Pegasus is cheating and instead uncover his history with Cecilia. Pegasus attempts to kill them when he discovers them, but Thief King Bakura re-emerges from the Millennium Ring to save his vessel, erasing everyone's memories of what happened that night. In the finals, Joey goes up against Bandit Keith, who cheats during his match and after losing tries to kill Pegasus unless he gets the prize money. Pegasus easily gets him off the island. Next, Yugi eliminates Mai and goes up in a duel against Joey. After winning, Yugi gives Joey the prize money and goes forward to duel Pegasus. During the duel, Thief King Bakura reawakens and begins to fight guards, trying to capture Mokuba himself, but Tristan manages to knock him unconscious and throw the ring into the woods far away. After Yugi wins the duel, Thief King Bakura uses his secret link to Bakura to reclaim the Millennium Ring and challenges Pegasus, taking his Millennium Eye from him. After returning to Domino City, Yugi meets Rebecca Hawkins, the granddaughter of Professor Hawkins who wants her grandfather's Blue Eyes card back. He and his friends also meet Duke Devlin, a game designer who believed Yugi must have cheated in his duel against Pegasus before becoming friends with him. When Seto Kaiba and Mokuba return to their headquarters, Seto goes to fire the Big Five who try and beg to keep their jobs by showing that they actually finish his virtual reality game. When Kaiba tries to play it, he finds himself trapped within the virtual world and Yugi and his friends have to come save him from it. After being freed, Kaiba traps the Big Five within the virtual world as a punishment for betraying him. Bandit Keith shows up in Domino City possessed by Marek Ishtar using his Millennium Rod. He tries to steal the Millennium Puzzle and almost succeeds but he manages to regain his mind and escape from a burning building. Ashizu Ishtar arrives in Domino City in the hopes to draw her brother and the rare hunters there. Using her Millennium Necklace she can keep herself safe with her prophetic powers and uses them to guide her. She tells Seto Kaiba that he's the reincarnation of Priest Seto and gives him the obelisk to torment a card and tells him of his history of Atem. Taking Ashizu's advice but not believing her story about him being connected to ancient Egypt, Kaiba finishes the development of his dual disc and holds the Battle City tournament, hoping to draw the other two god cards to Domino City. Upon getting his dual disc, Joe is challenged by a rare hunter named Seeker who summons Exodia and then defeats him, taking his red eyes black dragon. Joey caught up in grief doesn't show up for his sister's surgery, which makes Serenity postpone her surgery. The next day Joey shows up and she goes through her surgery right before Joey goes to the Battle City tournament. Yugi then finds Seeker and avenges Joey taking the red eyes black dragon card for himself. Yugi then runs into another rare hunter named Arcana, who is a disgraced magician. Marek promises to return his lost wife to him if he defeats Yugi. Arcana plays with his own deck based around the Dark Magician, but has multiple copies of it within his deck. During their duel, Arcana sets up sword blades to cut off the loser's legs. After defeating Arcana, Yugi saves his life. Yugi is approached by a third rare hunter named Strings. However, this rare hunter is directly being puppeteered by Marek using the Millennium Rod and has the Egyptian god card Slifer the Sky Dragon in his deck. Strings' deck is based around a monster which keeps reviving itself and allows him to stack up lots of cards to summon Slifer and then power it up. Atem finds a way to create a loop and causes him to draw his entire deck, disqualifying him when he cannot draw any more cards. Yugi now has Slife of the Sky Dragon. Marek and Thief King Bakura meet up and make a deal. If Bakura helps him get the god cards, Marek will then give him the Millennium Rod. Yugi's friends are all kidnapped by Marek except for Tristan and Serenity who are rescued by Duke Devlin. Mokuba also gets kidnapped. Kyra and Yuki team up to take on a tag team of rare hunters, Loomis and Umbra, who plan to take both of their Egyptian god cards at once. The windows below them are rigged to explode and make them fall to their death when they hit zero hit points. Both of the rare hunters secretly have parachutes. After defeating Loomis and Umbra, they discover that Mokuba escaped and they all head to the docks together where the rest of Marek's prisoners are being held. Holding Taya hostage, Marek forces Yuki to duel a brainwashed Joey. In this duel, both Joey and Yugi are chained to an anchor that will drag them to the bottom of the ocean after 30 minutes, or will drag the loser if the game ends before then. Yugi gives Joey his Millennium Puzzle to try and free him from the brainwashing, and stalls the game out as long as possible. Joey ends up breaking free of the brainwashing right before Yugi makes sure that Joey wins the game. Joey tries to free Yugi and almost drowns before being saved by Serenity. 
Thief King Bakuro manages to quickly gather all the locator cards he needs to qualify for the finals. Yugi, Joey, My Valentine, Bakura, Marek, who is pretending to be someone else, and Odeon, who is pretending to be Marek, Kaiba, and Ashizu qualify for the Battle City Finals. All of the contestants get onto an airship and begin to play out the finals. Yugi plays against Bakura in the first rounds of the semi finals and uses Slifer to beat him. Thief King Bakura tries to use Bakura as a hostage to force Yugi to back down from making an attack with Slifer, which could put the regular Bakura's life in danger. However, Thief King Bakura decides that the risk of him losing his vessel is too high and lets Yugi make the Slifer attack against him instead. After Bakura is hospitalized by Slifer's attack, Joey goes on to duel Odeon who has made everyone believe that he is really Marek. During the duel, Odeon plays a phony Winged Dragon Ara, which angers the real Winged Dragon Ara, causing lightning to be struck everywhere, knocking both Joey and Odeon out. Joey wakes up and wins the duel by default. During this, out of frustration and the loss of Odeon, Yami Marek awakens and seals away Marek's mind. Next, Yami Marek duels Mai. Yami Marek takes away a memory of a person Mai knows every single time one of her monsters is destroyed and attempts to mentally destroy her. She manages to steal the Winged Dragon Ara and attempts to play it, before finding out that the card has ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics on it that must be read in order to summon the monster. Marek then takes back Ra and wins a duel. Joey attempts to save Mai from Ra's attack, and then they are both saved by a Tem. Yami Marek uses the powers of the Shadow Games to put Mai's life on a 24 hour timer. The final quarterfinal match is Ashizu vs Kaiba. Ashizu uses her Millennium Necklace to see the future so she can easily win the duel, but right before her strategy plays off, the Millennium Rod activates on its own because of its ancient connection to Kaiba and gives him a vision of Kisara, which causes them to change the future and sacrifice Obelisk to summon his blue eyes, thwarting Ashizu's plan without him even knowing. After this duel, Ashizu gives Atem her Millennium Necklace. Later that night, Thief King Bakura is contacted by Marek's normal soul, who wants his body back. They team up to try and take down Yami Marek, but Bakura is obliterated by Ra's attack. On the airship's way to the location of the finals, it is hacked by Noah and captured upon a giant undersea fortress. Here they are brought into the virtual world without even realizing it. The big five, having been trapped by Kaiba in the virtual world, team up with Noah to take down Yugi, his friends, and Kaiba to try and steal their bodies. The parties all split up, and Yugi is challenged by Garnsley, Taya is challenged by Crump, Joey is challenged by Johnson, a lawyer who cheats, Duke, Serenity, and Tristan are all challenged together by Nesbitt, who defeats Tristan and takes his body, and then Lecter challenges Kaiba. Right before Kaiba's match, Nesbitt, who is in Tristan's body, kidnaps Mokuba and delivers him to Noah. Noah then brainwashes Mokuba to turn him against Kaiba. The Big Five, Sans, Nesbitt, desperate to escape, team up to try and take the rest of the bodies they need via force. Noah intervenes and tells them that they can only take a body from a group via a duel, and forces them to share Tristan's body with Nesbitt to duel against Joey and Yugi to try and win all of their bodies. Joey and Yugi win the duel, and then Noah banishes away the Big Five. After this, Noah and Kaiba duel. Noah uses Mokuba to stop Kaiba from winning the duel initially, then later the duel turns in Noah's favour, and Noah turns Mokuba and Kaiba to stone. Atem, who is outraged over Noah blackmailing Kaiba so he can't win the duel earlier, takes up Kaiba's deck and plays from where Kaiba lost. Yugi manages to win the duel by fusing all three Blue Eyes White Dragons together to make the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, and then defusing them to attack in the same turn, dealing over 13,000 damage in a single turn. At this point, Gozaburo reveals himself within the virtual world, and his plan to use missiles to hold the planet hostage and take over it. Kaiba goes to duel his adopted father while everyone else attempts to escape the virtual world. Gozaburo plays with an undead version of Exodia named Exodia Necros, but Kaiba overcomes it by destroying the Exodia cards in the graveyard. During this time, Noah takes over Mokuba's body and launches missiles at the Undersea Fortress to destroy where Gozaburo's mind is kept. Noah ends up feeling great guilt for dooming Kaiba and Yugi and his friends, and returns Mokuba's body to him and frees them all from the virtual world. As their airship escapes the fortress, Noah stops Gozaburo from escaping to a different computer system and they're both destroyed by the missile that Noah launched. After arriving at the island, Kaiba, Joey, Yugi and Yami Marek face off in a free-for-all which decides who fights each other in the finals. Joey purposely ends up taking himself out to make sure Marek and him are taken out at the same time so that he can duel Marek before anyone else. In Joey's duel, Yami Marek uses the Millennium Rod's power to make both him and Joey take physical damage whenever their monsters are destroyed. Yami Marek's entire strategy revolves around wearing down Joey over time, and although Joey plays well enough to put himself in the winning position, he passes out from exhaustion from all the damage that Marek inflicted. Joey is now put into a comatose state, and Yugi is forced to play out his duel against Kaiba. 
Both the gods cards clash and destroy each other, giving both Yugi and Kaiba a vision of a Tem and Priest Seto's duel in an extremely destroyed Egypt. After one final turn, Yugi wins and claims Olus the Tormentor, giving him two of the three Egyptian god cards. Joey recovers from his intense state and immediately challenges Kaiba to a duel for third place, which he loses. Marik, who left a small amount of his soul within Teya, possesses her and tries to take back his body. However, he is stopped, but luckily Teya's life is saved when the Tem shows up. Kaiba comes up with a strategy to defeat Ra, and with a push from Ashizu gives Yugi the Fiend Sanctuary card, which if used correctly could fully counter Ra. Atem and Marek finally face off in the Grand Finals. Yami Marek puts a stipulation on the game that every time they lose life points, their other half will be partially destroyed, leaving Atem in a position where he cannot lose or else Yugi will be killed, but if he wins, Marek cannot be saved from Yami Marek. During the duel, Atem uses Fiend Sanctuary to force Ra to attack Yami Marek, which almost gives him the win, but is counteracted. Atem later manages to pull the duel in his favour, but isn't prepared to finish off Yami Marek, as it would destroy the regular Marek in the process. Odeon manages to awaken and make his way to the duel arena, putting enough of a crack in Yami Marek's mental fortitude, which allows Marek to briefly reclaim his body. During this moment, Marek surrenders the duel, instantly destroying Yami Marek by the own rules of the shadow game that he imposed. Yugi then gains the third and final Egyptian god card, the Millennium Rod and the Millennium Ring which Yami Marek took from Yami Bakura. Marek then shows Atem the tattoos on his back that teach of his history and what he must do. Kaiba, out of frustration at the loss of the tournament, blows up the island, escaping on his blue eyes white dragon jet, while everyone else barely manages to escape on a separate vehicle. When Yugi returns to Domino City, Atem is lost and not sure what to do with his new god cards and information. He travels to the Tablet of Lost Memories and attempts to use the god cards to regain his memory, but Darts, who needs Atem's soul, freezes the tablet and drains the power of the god cards, so Atem cannot activate it. Afterwards, monsters begin to appear all around the world attacking people. Then that night, a group breaks into Solomon's game shop and steals all three of the Egyptian god cards. After giving chase, Yugi and his group catch up to the gang that stole the cards. Yugi begins to duel Grimo, who has Obelisk, and during the duel he plays a card named the Seal of Orichalcos, which creates a physical barrier around the game, and then takes away the soul of the loser. It also puts the player who plays it at a significant advantage. Garimo loses a duel even after playing Obelisk to torment it against Atem, but Atem is unable to recover the god cards as the rest of the antagonistic group take them and flee. That night, Darts gives up the power of the god cards to feed the Great Leviathan, and Yugi has a dream where he pulls a sword out of a dragon encased in ice, giving him the card the Eye of Tamias. Kaiba then travels to Duel's kingdom where he discovers Pegasus is trying to take over his company, and Duel's Pegasus himself. Partway through the duel, Pegasus reveals that it is not Pegasus, but a man named Alistar that's impersonating them. Alistar hates Kaiba because Kaiba Corp weapons killed his brother and fueled the war of his country when he was young. Alistar activates the seal of Orichalcos, and when Kaiba is struggling, he is a vision that awakens the legendary dragon Critias and gives him the card, the Fang of Critias, which he uses to turn the tables. Alistar plays a card to make sure they both lose, so that Orichalcos does not claim either of their souls. While travelling to Industrial Illusions to meet with the real Pegasus, the group discovers that My Valentine has been brainwashed by the Orichalcos and has already taken out Pegasus. She and Joey duel, and during the duel, Joey awakens Hermos and gains the Claw of Hermos card. Realising the card is bad news for Mai, Valen manages to end the duel and rescue Mai before they flee. The group then finds a message left behind by Pegasus and find a hidden blank card that he made for them. Right before the group catches up to Professor Hawkins, who was a researcher of Atlantis, he is kidnapped by the Orichalcos. Yugi chases Raphael to a cliff and duels him in the dead of night. During the duel, Raphael refuses to let his monsters enter the graveyard, believing that no other human cares for their cards as much as he does. Raphael gives Atem the seal of Orichalcos using the spell card Exchange to prove that Atem is secretly evil, and although nothing is at risk, when Atem becomes completely overwhelmed and is in fear of losing his honour, he plays the seal of Orichalcos. After Atem begins to turn the duel around, Raphael plays Guardian Iatos, a card that gains power for all of Atem's cards in the graveyard and wins the duel. When Atem is about to lose his soul, Yugi steps in and sacrifices himself instead. Seeing the power of the Seal of Orichalcos from Raphael's duel with Yugi, Weevil, Underwood, and Rex Raptor travel to Darcy's headquarters. Here, Raphael discovers that Atem managed to avoid his soul being captured. Rex and Weevil gain a copy of the Seal of Orichalcos each. Darts isn't bothered whether they win or lose against Atem and Joey, since either way he gains souls to feed to the Great Leviathan. Rex and Weevil split up a train that the group is riding, Atem and Taya are stuck on the moving part and Tristan and Joey are being left behind. In his duel with Weevil, Atem is no longer able to use the Eye of Tamias and Weevil almost wins the duel. 
Weevil pretends to destroy the card that contains Doogie's soul to try and provoke a Tem, which works very well and makes a Tem play the card Berserker's soul, which allows him to attack as long as he continues to draw monsters. Despite only needing to attack two more times to win, he attacks Weevil seven times in a row in a fit of rage and would have kept going if Taya didn't stop him. The train then falls off a cliff. Meanwhile, Joey duels Rex and beats him in a duel, sealing away his soul. In a valley, Atem runs into the spirits of Ironheart and Chris, who guide him through the Valley of Lost Souls. Atem meets multiple souls that he is doomed, such as Arcana and Bandit Keith. He eventually finds Yugi's soul, who he duels, and Yugi plays the seal of Orichalcos against him, mimicking the strategy that Atem used against Raphael. After defeating him and reclaiming the right to play the Eye of Tamias, Atem faces off against an Orichalcos soldier sent by Darts to try and take Atem's soul. Ironheart and Chris sacrifice himself in order to deliver the Eye of Tamais to attempt so he can win in the duel against the Orichalco soldiers. Alistair hijacks a train that Seto and Mokuba are taking and duels Kaiba on top of it. Alistair sets the plane to crash so even if he loses, Kaiba will still die. After winning the stool and watching Alistair's soul being claimed by the Orichalcos, Kaiba manages to barely stop the plane crash from killing them all, but they still crash. Joey, Kaiba and Atem meet up and travel to a nearby city where Joey runs off after seeing Valon and duels him. Valon's cards make a suit of armor that he can physically beat Joey with. Joey copies his strategy and makes his own set of armor, eventually becoming victorious. Mai arrives at the end of the duel and takes it upon herself to avenge Valon, but not long after the duel begins, Joey collapses from exhaustion and Mai wins the duel by default. Mai then realizes the error of her ways and tries to take down Darts herself, but is stopped by Raphael and has her soul taken. Atem meets Raphael for their rematch and manages to redeem Raphael during the duel, where Raphael and Atem discover that even though Raphael loses the duel, he gets to keep his soul because he accepts both the good and bad inside of himself. Raphael then gives Atem and the other the location of Darts' lair. Kaiba and Atem team up to duel Darts and despite an incredible first turn, he easily holds his own and takes out Kaiba. At this point, Raphael arrives at the temple and Darts tells him the truth that he was behind what happened to his family and what happened to Valon and Alistar. This reawakens the hate within Raphael and causes the seal of Orichalcus to reappear around him and take his soul. After almost losing the duel, Dart summons a Divine Serpent Gear, which is infinite attack and defense. Atem plays the card given to him by Pegasus, which returns all three of the legendary dragons to their original forms, as knights. They fuse together to defeat the Divine Serpent Gear, and then after the duel ends, Dart gives his soul to the Great Leviathan himself to summon him. Yugi rejoins with the Pharaoh and using the three reclaimed Egyptian god cards, defeats the Great Leviathan. In order to free Darts from its influence, Atem takes the entirety of the Great Leviathan within himself to seal it away. Now that it's sealed away, Darts can pass on to the afterlife along with Ironheart and Chris. The three legendary dragon cards also vanish now that Atlantis has been avenged. After things settle down, Kaiba holds a tournament where the winner gets a duel Yugi, the king of games. Some of the best duels from all around the world come to compete. Before the tournament begins, Siegfried von Schoer hacks the Kaiba Lane computers and puts himself in the tournament registry under a fake name, as well as meddling with the duel systems. As the tournament progresses, Siegfried also changes other key systems, even allowing an illegal card, the Golden Castle of Strongberg, to be playable, and makes it unleash a virus which will wipe out all of Kaiba Corp systems when played. During the finals, Siegfried is to duel against his brother Leon, who is also under a fake name, but Kaiba disqualifies Siegfried and defeats him in a duel to shame him, thinking that will deal with him. During Leon's match against Yugi, Siegfried reveals that when Leon plays the Golden Castle of Stromberg, the card will unleash a devastating virus that wipes out all of Kaiba Corp's computer systems. Yugi and Leon team up to destroy the castle to stop the virus, and since Kaiba Corp is a business that backs up its data, the virus does virtually no damage to them. Despite Bakura no longer possessing the Millennium Ring, Thief King Bakura has an intrinsic tie with Bakura and begins to possess him after tormenting him. Thief King Bakura steals the Millennium Ring and tells Yugi to meet him in Egypt for the Dark RPG. Next, Thief King Bakura challenges Kaiba to a duel, playing a monster named Deerbound that can drain power from other monsters. His true goal with this duel is to drain the power of the Blue Eyes White Dragon so Deerbound can take on the Egyptian gods. After completing his goal, Thief King Bakura flees the duel prematurely, but not before giving the Millennium Eye to Kaiba that he stole from Pegasus and telling him to travel to Egypt. Atem arrives in Egypt and shows the three god cards to the Tablet of Lost Memories, which opens up a portal and drags both Atem and Thief King Bakura, who was hiding within the Millennium Puzzle, into the Memory World. Shadi then appears and helps both Yugi and his friends enter the Memory World through the Millennium Puzzle. Inside the Memory World, Thief King Bakura and Atem begin to play the Dark RPG, where history begins to play out of Atem's memories. They can influence and control past versions of themselves, but if they do not, the past version will act as they did on the past on their own. The Pharaoh's priests are Priest Seto, who was the past incarnation of Seto Kaiba, who possesses the Millennium Rod. 
Priest Mahad, who possesses the Millennium Ring. Priest Shada, who possesses the Millennium Key. Priest Karam, who possesses the Millennium Scales. Priestess Isis, who possesses the Millennium Necklace. Finally, Priest Akhenaten, who possesses the Millennium Eye. And is Atem's uncle, and is also secretly the father of Priest Seto, but only Akhenaten himself knows of this. Thief King Bakura fights with the Pharaoh's priests as he did in the past and steals the Millennium Ring from Priest Mahad, who then turns himself into the Dark Magician. Later, Thief King Bakura uses the ring to corrupt Priest Akhenaten and makes him evil. However, Deerbound has been powered up by absorbing the present Blue Eyes White Dragon's power and is able to destroy Slifer. When Yuki and his friends arrive in the Memory World, they find a temple on the verge of death and manages to turn the tables in his favor and allows him to summon Ra and destroy Deerbound. However, using the power of the Dark RPG, Thief King Bakura reverses time and prevents Yugi and all the others from reaching Atem. After recovering from near death, Atem travels to Cool Elna, where the Thief King Bakura uses the power of the Dark RPG to freeze time and gather all the Millennium items. The path Bakura with Deerbound sacrifices himself to summon Zork Necrophades. Additionally, the corrupted Arknarden is turned into the Great Shadow Magus by Zork. At the palace, the Great Shadow Magus kills Kasara, the holder of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, and absorbs the dragon into himself. Priest Seto then kills him, but is possessed by the Great Shadow Magus. Seto Kaiba now arrives in the Memory World, and he and Atem arrive at the palace. Atem and Priest Seto duel using their monsters, and during the battle, the Blue Eyes White Dragon destroys itself, along with the spirit of the Great Shadow Magus, freeing Priest Seto from its control. During this time, an ally that Yugi and his friends had made called Babasa takes him to the Valley of the Kings, where they attempt to recover Atem's name so that he may regain his memories. However, they are stopped by a fragment of Thief King Bakura, who challenges Yugi to a duel. Yugi reveals his own deck and defeats him, memorizing the hieroglyphics to give to Atem so he may learn his own name. Zork arrives at the palace and begins destroying it, overwhelming even the three Egyptian god cards and even Exodia. Yugi's friends arrive, telling Atem of his true name. When Atem verbalizes his name, he summons the Creator of Light by fusing together the three gods and seals away both Zork and Thief King Bakura, freeing the modern day Bakura from his influence. Atem has now regained all of his memories and everyone returns to their world. Marek and Ishizu explain to Atem and his friends that Atem's soul cannot pass on to the afterlife until he loses in a duel with Yugi within an ancient temple. All of the Millennium items are brought to and placed within a shrine which allows for the ceremonial battle to begin. Yugi and Atem's souls are unraveled from each other and they begin to duel. Atem is able to use all of the Egyptian god cards against Yugi and Yugi must use his own deck, the same that he used to defeat Thief King Bakura in the Valley of the Kings. After Yugi wins a duel, Atem's soul passes on to the afterlife and the Millennium items are lost in a bottomless pit. And that is the entirety of the lore of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. Next time I'm going to talk about the lore of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which takes place a full decade in the future. If you like this video, give me a like or even subscribe to the channel, it helps me out so much. Thank you heaps for watching this super long video.